Clarissa is saying that anything that fits through the gallery door and or sticks to the walls of the gallery can be considered art. I'm not saying this because I'm sort of a person who does not appreciate modern art. I'm saying this as a leading metaphor for discussing what is software architecture. So, we have been talking about the different ways of defining software in the previous presentations, but the software architecture is something that we really haven't been defining before this moment. So basically, what the architecture in general is, is a, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for understanding an abstract phenomenon or abstract construct in a more concrete way. For example, with a building, you don't have to build a building or model a house before you can do architecture design for electric work or waterworks or the, what the, so the building would look like in the final environment. Similarly, the software, uh, software architecture is a metaphor or design for the software system or construct we are building and since there's no absolute definition, anything that defines what the system would look like, behave like, or from what components it will be built, it's something that can be considered part of the software architecture. So basically, software architecture is not actually one thing. It's a collection of things. It can be hardware architecture defining how different parts of the system are deployed. It can be network architecture, defining how the different parts are connected to each other with physical network appliances. It can be application architecture, defining uh, how the application is built, or system or software architecture, defining what components there are, what techniques are used, and uh, what sort of database we have, or what programming languages we use. There's an important uh, uh, dif uh, difference between software architecture and software architecture in a systems programming way. There's a reason why we define architecture. We want to manage the complexity of understanding technology and solutions and getting a big picture on what sort of system we are building. This is the generic term of software architecture. There's also other software architecture which is about standardized interfaces between platforms or different systems, like when you are able to produce source code with .NET environment, uh, basically with any major programming language, and still end up with the components that are interchangeable between the different languages, that's something which is called uh, architecture in system. That's more or less about objects uh, which can be distributed or technolo technological things. But in more generic terms, the software architecture is something that defines things so in a generic level so that we can manage complexity, have effective reuse uh, in follow-up projects also, and have better quality beca because we can manage functional requirements, non-functional requirements, and have some sort of idea what we are doing when we start to develop our software. So, uh, what's included in the architecture design then? Of course, now that we are talking about the software architecture in uh, the general uh, view, then of course the ide typical questions would be how is the whole composed of parts, so what parts are we building, how are these parts connected to each other? Uh, what sort of information they change to each other? What technology standards and ready-made components are used or are available? And how can we confirm that the, all the non-functional requirements are met? So basically things that we have been already talking about. So. Uh, 
How do we design or describe the architecture? Well, with UML, we can use many of the diagrams to get the idea of the deployment or the physical nature of the program or the components that will exist on the program or the behavior that we are going to use. Also, we can use just freeform pictures and descriptions uh, which means that we have a notebook or some other way to just make notes or designs or scribbles or templates or whatever about the user interface or things. We don't have to use UML or any other uh, definition or description language. Here we can just draw pictures, concept art, that sort of thing, and it's still perfectly valid architecture. So basically, but if we want to consider what the architecture in a more refined sense would be, we go back to the 4 plus 1 view into the software architecture, where we have different views on how the system behaves, what sort of components we are expected to build, where everything is stored during the development, how the entire system will look like, and how the software components are related to the real-world activities. So basically, the logical view, development view, process view, and physical view, like talked earlier. Also combined with the use case view, which gives an idea how the system interacts with people. So like with buildings, we have several ways to describe different things that will happen. Uh, for example, the waterworks, the electric work, floor plan, facade, how it, the building fits into the landscape around us, we can define what the system will look like when it's deployed, what compo how the system will be handled when it's being developed, wh how it, the system interacts, uh, how different processes or activities happen, and also what sort of components and system we will be developing for the uh, software. Combining all these things and we have a software architecture. So, considering this, we have sort of different views or similar activities. If we want to co add something that's beyond simple software development, we can also have, for example, game design document if we are building a game which inclu includes storyboard with introduces all the settings, the genre, the characters, and that sort of things. Of course, these can be added and they are part of the architecture, and that's completely fine. It's, there's no rigid de definition for what can be in software architecture. Everything that's related to design. Also keep in mind that we have been using the 4 plus 1 view, which says logical, development, physical and process view, but there's also a couple of other implementations. Physical, and physical view and deployment view actually mean the same, and development and implementation view also mean the same thing. Uh, it's uh, based on what uh, resource we are referencing to. There's also other definitions, like the Basenal here, which gives us module, conceptual, process, physical, use case, call view, data flow, control flow, and class view. Of course, this is more about how the software is developed, or what sort of things happen inside the software, and it's more about the software system itself, not, for example, about the information system, which includes all the other activities beyond what happens inside software. So, taking a few ideas, what can be used from the UML in describing architecture? Well, the subsystems, layers, and components can be described with class diagrams. We can use component diagrams in the implementation view, and of course the deployment diagram is the best way, uh, in my opinion, to describe how the deployment view would look like. Of course you have to understand that uh, the large part of the industry still uses freeform diagrams and pictures, but still UML gives a standardized way of describing your ideas. It's a way of to convey knowledge from one head to another, like we've been talking about during this entire course, so it's meant to ease 
the description, not enforce certain way of describing what you want to build. Going into UML2, there's a composite structure diagram which is supposed to help or which helps with the uh, definition of what diagram or what structure is related to what and of course we have the extended component and deployment diagrams. However, with UML2 there's the added problem that not many tools actually are supportive of the new UML2 extensions and additions, especially if you are trying to draw something that's uh, an added diagram with the UML2 definition. So, this is one way to de describe how software architecture document looks like. It has the 4, four plus 1 views, it has the quality definition and it has the size and performance and what sort of data we will be handling. This is something that we have been talking about earlier and this is completely valid software architecture. With games we add how the game story works out. With the network application we have more defined ways how the protocols, how the system should behave. With the multi-platform system we might have an addendum which describes the different ways the software is controlled or used when we are with desktop system or mobile application or anything else. If we are doing uh, open data application we might want to define on the data view or in data section, separate data section the open access uh, interface and how we will be using it. So overall as a small summary since this is one of the longer presentations in this course set the software architecture is quite fuzzy as a concept. Most of the people mean many things about it and there's a problem with the fact that the software architecture or system architecture may actually refer to mechanical or technical definition of something that enables uh, exchange of components or standardized way of uh, communicating between objects like with CORBA or .NET systems. Of course, the software architecture in general is not that, but it's more of a uh, general catch-all term, giving the idea or definition for all the design documentation which can be used in the determine and fulfilling the non-functional requirements, managing the built system complexity, doing work divisioning and overall defining what is the software we are building and what are the important parts that we have to define before we actually start doing something.